Hello everyone. My name is Lynn Moore and I'm the lead audiologist here at Hackensack Meridian Health at Mountainside Medical Center in Montclair, New Jersey. With me today is my colleague Jean Israel, who is the lead speech language pathologist here at Mountainside. We're speaking to you today in recognition of May as Better Hearing and Speech Month, and we'd like to talk to you about two important areas of hearing and speech health. I'll speak on how to protect your hearing, and Jean will speak on how to protect and care for your voice. Let's get started. Viewers, please feel free to ask questions using the chat feature. If you would like to be able to visually follow what we say, you can enable closed captions on your screen on your Facebook settings. Jean, can you tell us a little about what a speech language pathologist does here at Mountainside? Here at Mountainside Hospital, the speech language pathologists treat both inpatients and outpatients, adults and pediatrics with a wide variety of disorders that include language deficits, aphasia, swallowing deficits, voice disorders, and articulation disorders. Now let's talk about how to protect and care for your voice. What is the incidence of voice disorders in the United States? Approximately 7.5 million people in the United States have trouble using their voices. Interesting, and that's children and adults? That's both children and adults. What are some ways you can take care of your voice so you don't have voice issues? So some of the ways that you can care for your voice is to stay hydrated, drink plenty of water, avoid excessive caffeine and alcohol, take vocal naps throughout the day, use a fit humidif humidifier, and avoid or limit the use of medications that may dry out your vocal cords, and that includes some common cold and allergy medications. Maintain a healthy lifestyle and diet. Don't smoke, um, it irritates your vocal cords. Avoid eating spicy foods because that can cause some heartburn and reflux, which will affect your voice. And get enough rest, physical fatigue has a negative effect on your voice. Use your voice wisely. Try not to overuse your voice. Avoid speaking and singing when your voice is hoarse or tired. Rest your voice when you are sick. Illness puts extra stress on your vocal cords. Avoid using extremes of your vocal range, including screaming and whispering. Talking too loudly or too softly can both stress your voice. And consider using a microphone when appropriate. Avoid talking <clears throat> over noise. Try talking above noises can cause strain on your voice. If you have a voice disorder, you can consider voice therapy. A speech language pathologist who is experienced in treating voice problems can teach you how to use your voice in a healthy way. Now we're gonna hear from Lynn about how to protect your, your hearing. Lynn, can you tell us about your work here at Mountainside? Sure, Jean. I'm the audiologist here at Mountainside and I see inpatients and outpatients, meaning people who have been admitted to the hospital as well as those in the community that have made an appointment to come in. I'll see children and adults of any age. In addition to people who may suspect a problem with their hearing, I may also see people who don't have worries about their hearing but need it documented for their job. For instance, crossing guards, policemen, TSA agents, those seeking a commercial driver's license will all have a requirement for a hearing test done by an audiologist and I can help with that as well. Lynn, can you tell us about what noise-induced hearing loss is? Sure, noise-induced hearing loss is when your ears have just taken in more noise than they can handle and it can result in damage to the innermost portion of your ear. Noise-induced hearing loss might be temporary, like for instance, in, during non-pandemic times and you've gone to say a rock concert, you come home and you have kind of a hollow feeling or a ringing in your ears. That's usually a temporary problem and by the next morning you will have recovered. Um, however, there are also other activities that can be cumulative and cause a noise-induced hearing loss. For instance, if you work with power tools every single day and don't wear earplugs, you might have that same feeling, but it will be long lasting and possibly become permanent. What are some everyday noises that we should be concerned about? Well, in addition to things like, like rock concerts, which we know are very loud, um, things like using your snow blower, using your leaf blower, using your lawn mower are all very, very loud and potentially harmful activities for your inner ear. 
How about your, your hair dryer? Hair dryer can be very, very loud. When you think about it, the hair dryer is right at your ear, so that's about as loud as, as it comes. And I know, for instance, for me, I, I try out a number of hair dryers before I find one acceptable as far as the loudness level. How do you protect yourself from getting inner ear damage from noise? Well, there's three things that I want people to remember. Number one, you can walk away. Just get farther away from the noise source and that will make it less loud to you. Number two, you can reduce the volume. So if, say, your children listen to music on their personal devices, you might want to check the volume and just cut it down a bit. And number three is to wear some sort of earplugs or an over-the-ear hearing protector. And which earplugs are the best to, to choose? There are so many earplugs out there, but what I like to say is the best earplug is the one that you will wear and that the one that fits you well. We have a few questions from our audience and our community. How, how do you recommend discussing hearing loss with maybe an older parent who may be in denial? Well, when someone comes in for an evaluation with me, one of the tests that I do is how well they hear words at a regular conversational level. And I'll often have a family member sit in there with them. And then the person will see that, gee, I missed 10 words and my family member seemed to get all the words. Sometimes that will sort of help convince them. I also like to keep my evaluations for hearing pressure-free and educational so that the purpose of you coming in for a hearing test is to just find out more about what can make your life better. Good. And what are some easy, easy to spot signs of hearing loss? Um, if you find that you're turning the TV volume up much higher than the rest of your family, that would be a sign. If you go out with, say, a group of four people and it's hard for you to follow the conversation, that would be another sign. Okay, and do you recommend, we do a lot of speech evaluations on both children and adults with, with uh, communication issues. Do you recommend that they get a hearing test? I do, Jean, because I think that whenever there's a speech issue, you always want to just clear up at first that it's not related to a hearing issue. Good, good to know. Thank you. And Jean, we have a few questions for you. At what age should speech therapy begin? So speech therapy can begin um, very early. Um, here at Mountainside, we treat children from about 16 or 18 months and above. So if you notice things that are concerning to you, such as a child not responding um, or a child not you know, very happy and trying to engage with you, um, the pediatrician should be the first step in, in discussing your concerns. And then a speech evaluation is always helpful to rule out any issues and get them in therapy as quickly as possible. I see. We have another question. Can too much screen time cause a speech delay? That's a great question, and the answer is yes. Um, we have noticed that with children um, having excessive screen time, six, eight hours a day, they're not getting the abilities to interact with um, other people and children. Um, so we recommend limiting screen time to 30 minutes a day, even if it's educational, because then the children get to have live interactions in a, in a more appropriate manner that will help them develop their speech and language. I see. Another question from our audience, is speech therapy just for children or those with severe speech issues? No, we uh, treat both children and adults here, um, and we treat a range of, of um, deficits from mild to severe. So if you have issues that you're concerned about as an adult, um, even a mild voice disorder, you can come, at, come on in and we'll tell you whether you would be beneficial to have speech therapy. And I think that's where the evaluation for both speech therapy and mm -hmm. hearing is so important that we, we like people to come in and just find out what their options are. I agree. Okay, well thanks for joining us everyone. If you or your family members suspect hearing loss or voice problems, please call us to schedule an evaluation.